Just go wild when I pull up. They all on me like a one. So I've been using the iPad Pro for a little over a month now. And it's no secret that I absolutely love this piece of tech. It's a perfect addition to my MacBook Pro. If you want to know why I like it so much and why I still use both my MacBook and the iPad, I'll put a card up so you can go check out that video. Today, I want to share with you what I consider to be the best apps for the iPad Pro in 2020. Now, because there are so many amazing apps available and there's no way I can cover all of them in just one video, the idea is to start a series of best apps videos divided per category. Let me know in the comments if this is something you'd be interested in, and if so, which category of apps you would like to see for the next episode. So for this first episode, I've divided the apps in 10 categories. Productivity, organizing, note-taking, creativity and design, camera and editing, work, personal development, music creation, video, and games. I'll start the list with the app that also starts my day, which is Moleskin Journey. Moleskin Journey is the very first app I use in the morning, as it helps me do all the right things to set me up for a great day. The first thing it'll ask you is your mood. How are you feeling right now? Then I do a tiny bit of journaling, just jotting down my first thoughts and ideas for the day. I may come back and journal a little bit more throughout the day and again in the evening. This process helps me organize my thoughts, but it also helps me recognize patterns and behaviors, so they are easier to adjust if needed. I then continue to make a gratitude list. By listing all the things I'm feeling grateful for, first thing in the morning, I immediately put myself in a positive mindset for the rest of the day. Try it, it really works. I sometimes end up adjusting the mood I just put down for the day after doing this list. Then I set out my goals for the day, which I try to limit to two or three maximum. After that, I'll go through my calendar and change any actionable items on there into to-dos. Then I add my to-dos that aren't in my calendar and boom, I'm 100% ready for the day. I'm a bit of a productivity geek and I've used many apps to try and create the perfect productivity system, but most of them turned out to be either too complicated or incomplete. The second app in this category is Airmail. In one of my previous videos, I complained that I couldn't find a good email app for the iPad Pro. A lot of you like Spark email, but that doesn't work for me because I don't like threaded conversations and it won't let you turn them off. Trust me, I've asked. Thankfully, one of my subscribers, Shayan Azim, recommended Airmail to me, and I love it. Thanks, buddy. Airmail is feature-packed without looking too crowded or messy. It allows you to add all kinds of different emails, like Google, Exchange, and IMAP. I doubt that there's anyone out there who doesn't know Dropbox, so I won't spend too much time explaining it. It's a simple and intuitive filing system based on the internal filing systems on computer hard drives. Although Dropbox has been adding features to it over the years, like team and collaboration tools, I don't really use it for that. It's just a solid and reliable filing system that works on all platforms and is integrated with most apps. Another one of those oldies but goodies is Evernote. It's an app for note-taking, organizing, task management, and archiving. In my own workflow, I follow David Allen's Getting Things Done, where you toss everything that comes your way into a general inbox first, and then proceed to organizing it into different categories. Evernote is that inbox for me. When I receive an important email I can't deal with straight away, I'll send it to Evernote. Important document, I'll scan it and save it to Evernote. An idea that pops up in my head, I note it down in Evernote. Screenshots, save them in Evernote. And the list goes on and on. Then, once or twice a day, I go into Evernote and I decide what I want to do with all the items in my inbox. I know there are tons of newer apps out there like the popular Notion, but Evernote is still a fantastic app that keeps adding functionality and it isn't going anywhere. For note-taking, Notability is the way to go for me. I like its main competitor, GoodNotes, as well, but it won't let you record while you take notes, which is a deal breaker for me because I don't always keep up and I want to make sure I don't miss anything. You can click on any part of the note and it will play whatever was being said at that time. It's perfect. What isn't perfect is my handwriting on the iPad's slippery screen. I was persuaded to try the paper-like screen protector and I have to say it really makes a difference. It feels and even sounds like you're writing on paper and it provides a little bit of drag to the tip of the pencil and that's exactly what I need to control my handwriting. Another note-taking app I think is worth mentioning but doesn't really get that much attention is Inkredible. It's a simple handwriting app and doesn't have nearly as much functionality as Notability, 
but it does something awesome to your handwriting, which makes it look a lot better than it actually is. I don't know how, but it works. If you just want to take notes and you need them to look pretty, definitely check out this app. Now for creativity and design. Easily the most used creative app for me is Canva. It's a super intuitive, really easy to use design app that lets you create all sorts of things from simple slides to full-blown printable brochures. In fact, I use Canva to create my YouTube thumbnails. There are definitely better and more professional apps out there, like Affinity Designer or InDesign, but Canva is super straightforward. It has a free option and it works perfectly fine for basic design work. If you don't wanna pay a lot of money or you don't have the time to spend on learning design software, Canva is a great alternative. Every now and then, I like to draw on the iPad. It helps me relax. For this, I use Procreate. It costs $9.99 in the App Store and it's complete overkill for the simple drawings I do, but I just love the way it looks and feels. And if I do decide to get more serious about drawing, this app has a ton of features like layers and hundreds of brushes. Lightroom is perfect for doing quick edits to my photos. Don't compare it to Photoshop or Affinity Photo because it's not the same. Lightroom is just a really good app for quick touch-ups to make your images look better. I love that I can use this on all my devices, my MacBook, my iPad, and my phone. My favorite way of using Lightroom is on my iPad with the Apple Pencil. It gives you just that little bit of extra precision. For video editing on the go, I use LumaFusion. As of yet, Final Cut Pro is not available for the iPad. LumaFusion is by far the best available alternative. It isn't nearly as feature-rich as Final Cut, but it offers everything you need to create very decent videos on the iPad. It has an intuitive multi-track timeline for video and audio. You can add titles, transitions, and effects. Until Apple decides to finally give us Final Cut on the iPad, LumaFusion is king. And now for the boring part, work. Let's start with the most boring one, PDF Expert. Honestly, there's nothing exciting about this app at all. But if you work with a lot of documents, this is one of the best apps around. I use it to read, highlight, and edit PDFs for filling forms and signing documents. The good news is that there's also a Mac app available. The bad news is that you have to pay for that separately, and it ain't cheap. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. To communicate with my team and some of my clients, I use Slack. Slack is basically a messenger app for teams and businesses. It lets you create channels for different topics to which you can invite colleagues. You can send direct messages to specific people and it allows you to tag people in conversations, create little subgroups, share files and even set up video calls straight from the app if you pay for the premium version. When I'm working at my desk on my MacBook, I'll have Slack open on the iPad next to me. This way, I don't need to keep it open on my computer and I don't need to grab my phone every time a message comes in. If you're looking for an easy and free communications tool for your team, I definitely recommend Slack. I'm a huge believer in personal development. I don't think we're ever done learning and I'm constantly looking to improve myself, both in my professional and my personal life. For this reason, I'm a big fan of Audible for audiobooks. I don't have a lot of time to read books, and if I'm being totally honest, I don't really like to read that much. My mind tends to wander, and it'll take me ages to get through a book. For some reason, this isn't the case when I listen to a book. Audible makes use of Amazon's huge collection of books that are read to you, often by the author. This way, I can digest a lot of books in a relatively short time. My favorite time to listen to these is in the car during my morning commute. But I also listen to them at the gym or just chilling at home. For more practical personal development, I use Skillshare. It offers courses on pretty much everything. One of my personal favorites is this course on editing in Final Cut Pro by fellow YouTuber Ali Abdal. I say fellow YouTuber, but his channel is approaching a million subscribers. So yeah, anyway. If you haven't heard of him, definitely check him out. He's got some great content. If you want to check out Skillshare, they gave me an affiliate link for two months of free premium membership. I'll put it in the description if you're interested. I'm actually in the process of developing a course myself. Maybe I'll see you there once it's up. Music runs in my family on both sides. Sadly, I've never really fully mastered an instrument, but I still love to create beats and tunes. So I recently got myself into digital music creation. My current favorite is Beatmaker 3. It has a lot of options and integrations, and it even lets you connect a MIDI input device. 
there are definitely more professional options out there, but this is intuitive enough to get your head around pretty quickly, but still has enough features to create some awesome beats. If you just want to play around a bit with surprisingly realistic sounding instruments, go and download Thumb Jam. It has virtually no learning curve and it's so much fun. When I switched from iPhone to Android in the past, this was the app that I missed the most. It's been around for ages and I don't understand why they never created an Android version for it. Okay, so for watching videos, of course I use YouTube and of course I use Netflix, but I want to mention Amazon Prime Video here. First of all, I'm the biggest idiot ever because for the longest time, I didn't realize it comes with Amazon Prime membership. But also, like Netflix, it has its own originals, some of which are pretty good. Plus, it has some great old shows, like Seinfeld. Another app that I'll group in the video category is TubeBuddy. Now that I'm creating YouTube videos myself and I'm trying to grow my channel, this app helps me optimize titles, find great tags and keywords, and and tell me exactly how many subscribers have joined the channel, how many hours my videos are being watched, and at what point viewers drop off. This is very useful to me since I can learn what you guys like and what you don't, so I can keep improving my videos. Lastly, games. So these days, I prefer cool little games that I can just pick up and play for a little bit whenever I find a moment. Apple Arcade is great for this kind of stuff. It has a growing selection of games and you can try it for free. I really like Sneaky Sasquatch where you play, well, a Sasquatch, who goes around a park stealing food while trying not to get caught by the park ranger. But my absolute favorite is Grindstone. This little puzzle game is seriously fun. I don't know if it's the animations, the sound design, the puzzles, or all of the above, but this is definitely the one to check out. Well, there you have it. Some of my best apps for the iPad in 2020. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there are so many great apps around, so I intend to go into more detail for each category. Let me know in the comments which category I should tackle first. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when the next one is up. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.